Yeah. So uh, we are starting with the analysis of LRDI. So let's go through the You have four sets. So let's go through all the core. And then decide which ones you should have attempted first. Okay. So uh, this, this set, because IPL, there are eight participating teams divided into two groups of four team seats. And each group, each team played exactly once to the other team. That means there were four C2 matches for each team, for each group. That is six matches in each group. Uh, okay. So uh, this kind of seems like you have this eight teams. There are four, two groups. And it is given that uh, the sole winners played for, from each group played each other on Sunday. That has to be final. And the tournament started on Monday. So you have to figure out which team played on each day, who won and who were the finalists. So you have this set of information and you have to figure this out. Okay. So let's go to the next set and understand them. Now, next set you have is five students are asked to stand around a circular uh, track facing towards the center. And then exactly three, three students are, like, these are the positions given, okay, in the circle. And then uh, this is the information regarding the uh, five students. So what you have to do is do this circular arrangement, understand who is sitting where. And I think the information is not complete, so you might have to make cases. This is, this is the thing in this case. Now let's go through the next case, like. So, um, this case, case lit is, uh, conducts a survey and the best course, it is uh, like there are two proposals, okay. And then thousand cities have participated. Now, the team of scientists will eventually oversee the global combat against the disease. And that will be headed by only one of the two countries, USA and China, okay. Uh, so this case ideally is that all the out of all the cities, some are pre proposing like preferring X, Y, or either of the proposals, and uh, all of them choose uh, which country will head that. Okay, seems a little bit easy since you just have to figure out the numbers. Okay, like this is the information given on how many proposed, like how many supported which proposal, and how many cities were in support of these countries. Uh, now the next set this seems like the DI set. Okay. Um, this there are three departments. Consumer waits for some time, and um, this is the average he waits for is called response time, and the average he is assisted is called execution time. Then, uh, so you have this data given for total time and execution time, and then it, it's based on the questions. Okay, so um, now tell me, I it's a lag or I am. So I have I have told you uh, like I have gone through all the four sets. Now tell me, ki iske according what you guys are able to screen see the screen, right? Okay, so now tell me which 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 set you should have attempted first. Third set. Third set seems seems easy. See, third set, man, what you have to do is just arrange the numbers. And you are, uh, that, that seems easy. Okay. So, um, let's go back to third set. Let's start with third set, okay? Yeah. So, here it is given that... Um, uh, see, let's, let's read again properly now. So, uh, WHO conducts a survey to finalize best course of action to eliminate a disease. And there are two proposals. Okay. Now, 1,000 cities participate and a city does not necessarily support either of the two proposals. So, there can be four options. They support X, they support Y, or they support both X and Y, or they support neither. Okay, now the team of scientists which will eventually oversee the global combat against the disease will be headed by only one of the two countries, USA and China, and each city prefers exactly one of the two countries. So, uh, like, 
you for all these options you have another two options that they choose either usa or china getting it now 620 cities supported proposal x and 450 sub okay so I'll, i'll just give this variables a name okay a b c d e f g h and this is kind of total This total represent. Uh, see here it represents how many of them uh, supported USA. Here it represents how many of them supported China, and here it represents how many of them supported only X proposal or Y or both, and similarly. Now, uh, see six twenty cities supported proposal X. So proposal X would have been supported by A, B, E, and F, right? So I'll just form the equations for now. A, B. E. This gives you six twenty, and four fifty cities supported proposal Y. So this gives you C, D, E, and F. Okay. Now, uh, among the four hundred cities who preferred China as the lead, so China as the lead was supported by four hundred. And total there were thousand cities, so that means USA was supported by six hundred, right? Now eighty percent supported proposal X, so proposal X was supported by uh, B plus F, so that gives you B plus F is equal to point eight of four hundred, which is equals to three twenty. Getting it? Guys, you are getting it, right? Yes. Uh, now every city. Uh, where were we? Uh huh. Among those who preferred USA, fifty percent supported proposal X. So proposal X for USA was supported by A plus E, and that is equals to fifty percent of the total number. That is six hundred. So this gives you three hundred. Now forty percent of those who supported proposal Y preferred China as the lead. So proposal Y was submitted by uh, like pro supported by C, D, E, and F. So out of C, D, E, and F, forty percent of them sub preferred China as the lead. So China as the lead was proposed by D and F. Okay. Um. Now every city who preferred China and supported proposal Y also supported proposal X. So what does this mean? Every city who preferred China as the lead and supported proposal Y, that means D, also supported proposal X. So neither one of them, like neither of the cities, supported only Y. That means D has to be zero. You are getting this point. How D is zero? Got this point? Yes, अच्छा I'll I'll repeat it once again. See, ah, uh, it's given that every city who preferred who preferred China, like every city who preferred China and supported proposal Y. Now proposal Y was supported by D and F. Now it's given that the ones who supported proposal Y also supported proposal X. That means there were no cities who like supported only just Y. Okay. They supported both X and Y, so that means we have zero. Yes, got it. So here we got D is equals to zero. That means this is this is zero. This is zero. Um. Now let let's just simplify this. So from here you have point four of C plus E plus F. Is equal to F or point four of one second.
getting this or c plus e equals to 3 by 2 f are you getting this uh, now among those who preferred usa as the team lead 40 percent did not support any of the proposals so usa as the team lead was su supported by 600 people and out of those 40 percent now 40 percent of 600 is 240 240 did not support any of the proposals so they were neither so this is 240 okay now uh, coming back to this equations, see in this uh, you have d equals to 0. Now c plus e can be replaced by 3 by 2 f here. Okay, so that will be 3 by 2 f plus f is equals to 450. So what will be the value of f when you solve this equation? Tell me. Uh, okay, you, you can also use the four diagram set. It, it, it's similar only. Tell me the value of f, what will come after solving this? 180, right? So you have f is equal to 180. Let's just write it down here. Okay. Uh, now you can you can get a uh, value of b from this equation b plus f is 320 so what will be b b will be 320 minus 180 yes b will be 140 right now here since you have all these three values you can get h right 180 plus 140 is 320 and D is 0. So you have H as 80. Right? Okay. Now, um, coming back to here. So you have in this equation, you... Yeah. We had the C plus E equals to 3 by 2 F. That 3 by 2 F will be 3 by 2 into 180. That's 270. Now, uh, Let's just put it here in this. Oh, one second. Are we missing something? A, C, and E. Now, now where will. Yeah. So, in this equation, the value of A plus C plus E plus G that has to be 600. Okay. So, you have G equals to 240 and you have C plus E equals to 270. So what will be the value of A? Tell me. A equals to 90. So this comes to 90. Okay. Now here we have A plus E equals to 300. So what will be the value of E? 210 right and since c plus e equals to 270 what will be the value of c let's see we are good to go 600 wala equation kaha se aaya ma'am see here it's it was given that among the four 400 cities preferred china okay theek hai so 4 100 cities preferred China and total number of cities surveyed was 1000. That means ki USA was surveyed, USA was supported by 600 cities and this all, this sum should amount to 600. So that gives you A plus C plus C plus C equals to 600. Okay. Got it? We are good to go. Should we go back to questions now? Yes. Okay. So let's go to questions. Yeah. Now, how many cities that prefer China as this led supported both the proposals? So, the the first thing is they supported China and they supported both the proposals. So, that means our answer will be F. You are getting this? So, F is 180. Okay. So, we have F. Now, how many cities supported only proposal X? See, only proposal X, not both. And they preferred USA as the team lead. 
So they pref preferred USA and they supported only X. So that is A, which gives you 90. Okay. What you are getting it right? Yes. Okay. Now what percentage of the cities surveyed that did not support proposal X? Did not support proposal X. That means they support either only Y or neither. Preferred USA as the team lead. Okay, so only Y or neither. What is the sum? See, this is only Y, 60. And neither is 320. So out of these, like out of these 380, how many supported USA as the team lead? That will be C plus G. So that gives you 240 plus 60. Now what is this percentage 300 by 380? So this will be I think something around 0 0.79 or 8. 0 0.8. Just take this one. Um, I think it should be around 79%. Getting this? Yes. Now next question is how many of the cities surveyed supported proposal Y and did not support proposal X? This supported proposal Y means either only Y or both. But then this mentions that did not support proposal X. So we can cut down both. Okay. That means we need to find only Y and preferred USA as the team lead. So only Y and USA as the team lead. That gives you 60. This, this you got. Okay, is it fine? Is this set fine? Easy, this was easy. Yes. Shouldn't it be 300 by 1000? No, it's it's mentioned what percentages of the city surveyed that did not support. Like you need to take this as the base and then US as the team lead as the numerator. Okay. Got it? This was easy set, you should... Ma'am, you do do you follow a particular format to solve the question? Because that's where I always make mistakes and it's see it depends on individual to for the number of sets to practice and become good. And for particular format also it depends on uh on the set itself. Okay. This set took 13 minutes to you in the exam or here. Here though obviously we were we are going slow. Okay. But was this set easy? Exam. I think you need to improve your calculations a bit, Swapnil. Okay. Because this, I think you should do, you should be able to do it in like 10 minutes max. Solve voila. This was easy set with the. Yeah. Where to practice LRDA? Practice it from this mocks and from the previous year CAT papers, okay? Now let's go to next set. So which should which should be our next set from the ones we have discussed? It should, it should be the circular arrangement because I think it's easy. And if you, if you are good with calculations, you can also go with the DILR1, DI1, okay? The last set. And if you think like LR is your forte, since this seems to be an easy one, then you can go with the LR1 also. Either you go with the second one or either you go with the fourth one. Now, in this question, it's given that there are five students and they are asked to stand around a circular track. Just one second. Uh, now, there is no, uh, see, there there should be exactly two distinct pairs of students is that angular distance is seven, 140 degree. 
and also there are three students around the track says that the distance between adjacent students is 70 degree okay so let's make those this is 70 degrees this is 70 degrees okay so these are three positions now uh, there are two distinct pairs of students with angular distance 140 degrees so this is one of them okay these two pairs one and two this is one of them now we need another pair and there are three angular distances possible okay now this is 140 so this has to be 220 right now if we make this another pair with this guy like um suppose it's some x guy and if it then it has to be 70 degree here then it will be 140 if if we try to make this two distinct pairs now if this if if this is 70 this has to be 220 minus 70 that will be 150 and i cannot arrange 150 in the form of some of these two like any of these two okay since uh like if you take 40 it will be one 110 so it's not possible this arrangement will not be possible okay so another arrangement can be that there are these three guys with 70 degree angular distance And then um, there is another with this 140. And uh, since this is 220, so 220 minus 140, this is 80. So we can do this as 40, 40. Now only three arrangements are like three angular distances are there 70, 140, and 40. And all of these conditions follow. Okay. This is okay. This arrangement is okay. Uh, I'll, I'll make this circle bigger. Now, are you able to follow? This is fine. Yeah. Okay. Now three of them are doctors and two of them are engineers. And engineer is to the immediate right of T. And both the engineers cannot be together or opposite each other. And the person adjacent to T must be either both P and R or neither of P and R. So uh, like adjacent to T will be either P and R or Q and S. Okay. Also, it is mentioned that both the engineers cannot be together or opposite each other. So, one of the engineers is to the immediate right of T. That means T is not engineer. T is doctor for sure. Okay. Getting this point? Yes. Okay. Now, let's, let's look at the questions what we need to do. Yeah, so P is an engineer and angular distance between T and P is the least possible. And if R is not next to Q, what is the angular distance between R and Q? Okay, so let's draw it out. Guys, pardon my drawing. Now, uh, angular distance between T and P is the least possible. So, either T and P can be these and these or these two. Okay. So, now let's arrange it out. And uh, see, T, uh, like P is, uh, P is sitting near to T. Okay. That means T, uh, like the adjacent neighbors to T has to be P and R. That's what we figured out. Okay. Uh, so, for example, let's take first case where T is this and T is this. This is engineer. This is doctor. 
and so this will be r and r is not next to q so this has to be s and this has to be q now what is the angular distance between r and q so see in this case see uh, like an engineer is sitting to the immediate right of t so that is already followed p is sitting to the right of t okay so this is one of the case and in this case the angular distance between r and q will be 70 and 40 that's 110 now let's look at another case where uh, this can be Let's look at the second case. Now, uh, in this case, I'm considering that P is here and P is here. This is 40. So this has to be R. This is 140. And Q is not sitting next to R. So kill here and this is s this is 70 now this is a uh, doctor this is engineer and it is mentioned that uh, a person like an engineer is sitting to the immediate right of t so that has to be r and this will be engineer which contradicts our first con condition that both the engineers cannot be together or opposite so like In this case, the engineers are opposite to each other, okay? So this case is not possible. Now let's look at the third case. Assume that this is 40, this is 40. And T and P are sitting here. Now this will be R. This has to be S and this has to be Q. Now P is an engineer and to the immediate right of T is also an engineer. In this case, they are neither opposite, neither next to each other. So this follows and this is 70. So in this case, uh, the distance between R and Q is again 70 plus 40. That's 110 degrees. Okay, that's correct. Now there will be another fourth case where it will be P and T. So this is engineer and this is R, this will be S and Q. Now to the immediate right of T also in this case is P. So this is engineer. Now in this case also this is 40 and the distance between R and Q is Again, 70 and 40, 110, right? So, in all the cases, the distance between R and Q is 110 only, correct? Last part, T, doctor, can say R and Q, 70 plus 40 plus 140. Uh, I didn't get your question. Case 1, R and Q, T, do. See, T doctor has a yoga ki. Oh, one second. So, here it's given that engineer is to the immediate right of T. Okay, T ke immediate right mein there is an engineer sitting. And here it's mentioned that both the engineers cannot be together or opposite each other. So if T ke immediate right mein there is an engineer and if T is also an engineer, then they both are sitting together. This violates the condition. That's why T is a doctor. Okay. Now what is your question next is? Case 1, R and Q, 70 plus 40 plus 140, how See, case 1, this was it. Now, R and Q, this is 
70 and this is 40 and this is Q. So this has to be 70 plus 40. See, always whenever distance is asked, you consider the minimum distance, okay? As any effort, circle ke is according me. You consider the minimum distance, okay? So this will be 110. Now, let's move to the next question. In this question, is it is given that P, a doctor, is to the immediate left of T. Now, who is definitely an engineer? See, this was our... Now, since P is sitting to the immediate left of T, that means T K adjacent would be P and R. Okay. Now, assume that, um, let's start with this. T is sitting here and to the immediate left is P. Then here it will be R. So, T K immediate right mates an engineer. This is a doctor. T already we established that T is a doctor and RK adjacent may cannot be engineer. So this has to be a doctor, right? And here it will be an engineer. Now who among the following is definitely an engineer? R, R is definitely an engineer, right? Clear? Okay, let's move to next question then. Now, if P is to the immediate right of R, then which of the following persons are doctors? Okay. So, in this case, see, P and R, if both are adjacent to each other, that means they cannot be adjacent to T. But T K adjacent may, will be Q and S. Okay. Got, get, getting this point? Got this point? Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, um, let's assume that T is here and P is to the immediate right of R. So, T K, this is an engineer. Okay, T K adjacent me. Now, uh, which of the following persons are doctors? So, this is either Q S or S Q. Now, this, uh, if P P is to the immediate right of R. So that means this is R and this is P. If this is an engineer, this can T is already a doctor. This cannot be an engineer and this cannot be an engineer. So um I think you have the only option of engineer is P. And I think R R will have to be a doctor. But you cannot say who all will be the doctor. See, R and T will definitely be a doctor, but it can be either S or either Q. So it will be cannot be determined. Yes, you got this question. Yes, okay. Now let's move to next. Now assuming the data given in the first question, what is the least possible angular distance between P and R? See, we had three cases, okay, one, one of them was not possible, so let's, let's look at those cases. Now, least possible distance between P and R. In this first case, the least possible distance was 70 plus 40, okay. This gives you 110. This was not possible, second case. Now, this was the third case. Here, between P and R. It was again 70 and 40. That means 110 only. And in the four, fourth case here, here I think the difference, this is 140. So the distance here was 140 plus 40. So that is 180. So the least possible is 110. Yeah, least possible is 110. You think this? Yes. Okay. So we are we are done with this set. So what do you think about this set? This was also doable. You just had to form the cases. Yes. 
so this should have been your second or third attempt depending on uh, see easier than case involved tough ho laga ha to that's why i took it in the second second set okay matlab else you could have attempted it as your first one theek hai but this this is easily doable like if if you practice this kinds of set little bit you can do it as easily okay now let's go to this third set see if if you are go, go to with calculations you can pick this set because this has six questions but if you think that you are good with lr then pick up the one we already did okay डी सेकंड लिया था हाँ ले सकते हो इफ यू आर गुड विद कैलकुलेशन एंड इफ यू थिंक दैट यू आर बेटर विद डी देन इट्स इट्स ओके नाउ लेट्स डू दिस सेट इट्स गिवन दैट अ लार्ज स्टोर हैज थ्री डिपार्टमेंट्स बेवरेजेस फूड एंड इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड अ कस्टमर वेट्स फॉर सम टाइम आफ्टर विच ही इज असिस्टेड एंड दिस वेटिंग टाइम इज कॉल्ड रिस्पॉन्स टाइम एंड दाइम ही इज असिस्टेड इज एक्सिक्यूशन टाइम एंड the response time plus execution time this is the total time okay now this graph show total time and execution time for each department as a percentage of overall total time and overall execution time okay now this overall total execution or response time is sum of total execution response time for all three departments combined and this lines represent different percentage levels uh, so for example this 50% of overall total time was taken by electronics okay and uh, i think execution department ka aise they have given an example now uh, so let's let's form a table to tabulate this data uh, let's take it as okay food beverages electronics and then uh, we have data for 3 years so let's just do 2016 response time or or even second we can what we can do is Let's take this as two thousand sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen, and this is the response time. Okay, I think we'll need more space. One second. This was past year cat. Okay, okay. Then, then, so you should be easy to go. This is your total time, and this is your execution time. Now, um, you have been given the data in percentages, and see so you have this data that percentage response time for the store in two two thousand sixteen was fifty percent. So, uh, see, I'm I'm assuming that the response time for store in two thousand sixteen was hundred seconds. Okay. Yeah. 
now um, what what we will do is see these are all given in percentages so i am assuming it to be total 100 seconds see now now this is uh, okay we need another for total Now here in 2016, if this was 100 seconds, and see, uh, the response time percentage is given by response time by total time into 100. So if this was 50%, this implies total time was 200 seconds. Okay, since this is uh, 50%. Okay, so here this will be 200 seconds. Now next is, um. Stores total time doubled from 2016 to 2017. So total time doubled from 2016 to 2017. This became 400. So we use this. And its execution time doubled from 2016 to 2018. Now here, see, um, now uh, total time is equals to response time plus execution time. So for 2016, the execution time will be 200 minus 100. It will be 100. Now this doubled. So this got 200. Okay. We are getting this. Now the response time of electronics department in 2017 was 0. Response time of electronics department here, this was 0. Okay. And in 2018, the total time of beverages went was twice the execution time okay okay we'll we'll come to this particular sections now let's see, utilize the information we have from this graph is is it clear to all of you is it clear yes okay so total time uh, in 2016 this this data is for 2016 so this was 50% 30% and 20% or I think one second. Yeah. So um so for electronics it is fifty percent of the total time. This is total time. Now this fifty percent this will be hundred and I think food is 30% and beverages is 20. So this will be 30 and this will be 20. Now similarly for 2017, we have this here. So this is 40%. Food is 40% and electron, uh, electronics and beverages is 30-30. So food is 40% of 400. Okay, okay, sorry. I think I made a mistake here. This will be into 2. So this will be 60 and this will be 40. Sorry, uh, you have to calculate it out of 200 seconds. And now you have to calculate out of 400 seconds. So 40% for food. So 40% of 400 is 160. And rest is 30%. So that will be 120, 120. Okay. You got this point? Now, uh, see, see for developing the setups, you'll have to practice and you'll have to structure, okay? Now, uh, let's go to, see, we have the total data for execution time of 2016 and 2018. Let's plot that now. So, From this execution time uh, for 2000, I think we have for 2016 and 18. So for 2016, this case, um, this is 30%. Oh, wait, this is, yeah, this is 30%. Electronics and beverages is 30% and food is 40%. So electronics and beverages is 30% of 100 and food is 40 now, similarly for 2018, if we see here, this is um, 
this is 50 percent electronics is 50 percent this is 30 percent food and beverages is 20 so electronics is 50 percent that means 100 food is 30 percent that means 60 and this is 20 percent okay they're going correct yeah you're getting this now you can calculate the response time for 2016 since it's two, two, total time minus execution time. So just tell me this. This will be 60 minus 40, 20 and this will be 40 minus 30, 10. This will be 100 minus 30, 70. Getting it? Yes? Okay. So uh, let's see what, what questions do we have and then we can see what information we need. Or one second, we just left this one point. We should see it again. See, this was given total time of beverages department in 2018 was twice the execution time of the food department. Now, 2018 total time of beverages department, suppose this is X, this is twice the execution time of the food department. So, this is. 60. So this will be 120. And since this is 120, for this we'll get 120 minus 40, 80. Okay. We are we are done with this information also. Now let's see what else information we'll need according to questions, and we can figure out later. Now it's given what is the percentage response time of the store in 2018. So Percentage response time is given as response time by total time into 100. Now, um, okay, for so we'll need response time for 2018. Let's see where we can get it from. Um, okay, okay, what see what we have is see response time for beverages. Uh, see, total time ka we have graph and for 2018, we, let's see 2018 total time ka graph. So we have, um, this is 40% is food and 30-30% is electronics and beverages. Now, uh, this electronics and beverages, this is 30%, okay. Uh, sorry, this, like 120 is your 30%. So, uh, electronics and beverages, it is the same. So, this will also be 120. And since this is 30%, 40% will be, this will be, uh, 160. Getting this point. So, this total has to be 240 and 160. That has to be 400. You got this point. How, how we calculated the total time for 2018. So now the response time comes out to be total time minus execution time. This, this equals to Now percentage response time for 2018 will be response time by total time into 100. So response time is 200 divided by total time is 400 into 100. So what do we get? This is 50. So this is equal to 50 percent. For this question, guys, you are able to catch up with this question. Yes. Let's move to the next now. So ratio of total time of food department in 2017 to response time of electronics department in 2018. Okay, we'll we'll need to figure out this also. So we can figure out this easily. Response time is total time minus execution time. So this is 160 minus 600. This is 120 minus 100. This is 20. Okay. Now, yeah. It's easy. You just need to uh, look at the information and see how you can calculate all of them. Okay. Are you able to catch up with me? Shelly, you are able to catch up with me what we are doing right now. Yes. Okay. So, what information do we need?
See, you need total time of food department in 2017. Total time of food, that is 160. 160 ratio. Response time of electronics department in 2018. This is 20. Okay. So, this is 1. This is 8. So, this is 8 is to 1. Got it. This was easy. Now, next question is percentage of overall response time of the store in 2016 was the electronics department. So, for 2016, electronics department was 70 out of the uh, total time of 100. Okay. So, this gives you 70 by 100 into 100. That is 70%. Yes. Guys, you are able to catch up, right? right? Yeah. So, now what is the next question? Ratio of total time of food department in 2018 to the execution time of electronics department in 2016. Okay. Food department in 2018. Um, this was total time. Total time. This is 160. And execution time of electronics department. Execution time of electronics department for um, 2016. This is 30. So this is 30. Now this is not correct, right? This is 16 is to 3. This is incorrect. Now percentage response time of the beverages department in 2018. Now for beverages department, this was 80 by 200 into 200. So this will be 40%. This gives to be 40%. So this is also incorrect. Okay. Now the next is ratio of execution times of beverages department in the year 2016, 17 and 18. We need execution time for beverages department okay we have not calculated for 2017 so um see for electronics this time will be 120 minus zero this is 120 now uh, when when you go to execution times ka graph this gives you for 2017 electronics is 60 percent and this is Beverages is 10, this is 10, this is 60, and this is 30. Food is 30, and electronics is 60. So 60% 60 is 120. So beverages will be 20, since it's 10%, and this will be 60. Okay? Now what we need, need is execution time of beverages. For beverages, for 2016. So, so this will be 30 is to... 20 is to 40, that is 3 is to 2 is to 4, yeah, so this is also incorrect, we have 3 is to 2 is to 4, now uh, let's, let's look at the last one, percentage response time of food department in 2017, food department, okay, we will we'll need to calculate this, so this is 160 minus 60, this is 100, and this is also 100. So this is 200. Now percentage response time of food department in 2017. So this is uh, 100 divided by 200. 200. So I think this comes out to be 50% only. Um, I think this is also incorrect. Just check this once. Have you have we made somewhere a calculation mistake? I think uh, none of them is correct. Hundred by one sixty. Who oh, is it? Wait one second. Hundred by. Yeah, I think why why it will be hundred by one sixty? 
ओके सॉरी 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 परसेंटेज रिस्पॉन्स टाइम इज रिस्पॉन्स टाइम बाय टोटल टाइम आई एम सॉरी सो फॉर इट दिस विल बी हंड्रेड बाय टोटल टाइम दैट विल बी हंड्रेड बाय वन सिक्सटी या 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 यू आर राइट दिस विल बी हंड्रेड बाय वन सिक्सटी इन टू हंड्रेड सी परसेंटेज रिस्पॉन्स टाइम इट इट इज गिवन इन द क्वेश्चन दैट इट्स हंड्रेड बाय लाइक रिस्पॉन्स टाइम बाय टोटल टाइम इन टू हंड्रेड so so that will be 100 by 160 200. So this will will be by I think this will come out to 62.5 okay is this fine yeah 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 total time yes 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 okay so next move to next question yeah if response Time of the store in twenty seventeen was two hundred seconds. We need to find execution time of electronics department. So currently, response time of store in twenty seventeen is two hundred seconds. This is two hundred seconds. And uh, execution time of electronics department in twenty seventeen. Twenty seventeen. This is one twenty seconds. So see if it is two hundred seconds, then it is one twenty. So if we tone it down to twenty seconds, like this is one tenth, this will also be become one tenth. So this will become twelve seconds. You are getting this question. See, we assumed it to be hundred seconds, yeah. And this is just for the sake of simplicity. If if you have taken down in percentages, it would have been difficult. So just for the simplicity, we have taken this number. Now we have execution time of food department in two thousand eighteen. Food department in two thousand eighteen. Execution time of food department that is sixty seconds now. What was the sum of the response time of store across? Twenty sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. Now that is response time across tour. So this is hundred, two hundred, and two hundred. This will be hundred plus two hundred plus two hundred. So this is five hundred. Now if it's thirty seconds, like if I reduce it to half, this will also reduce to half. So this will come back to two fifty seconds. Is it okay? Yes. Okay. So I think we are done with this set. So what do you think about it? This set was also doable. Easily doable. Yeah. It it would have taken time since this involves calculation, but it is easily doable. Okay. So if you if you follow the strategy of picking up sets correctly, you could have solved three questions, okay, like three sets in 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 your forty minutes, okay, and that would have also taken you to like ninety eight ninety nine percentages, okay, like this. I think this paper itself this is a bit easy, so you would have to move towards the full set if you want to go past ninety nine point five percentile. But solving this three sets, you could have easily got to ninety nine point five percentile in DNLR. Okay. Six questions are the second priority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can go for that second priority. Okay. So now let's look at this. Ah, uh, see, it may be six questions, are, but this set seems to be a little difficult. Little bit difficult. It's better than. Like you solve those two easy sets of four questions each, rather than picking up a difficult set which you might not be able to solve of six questions. Okay. Yes, I think who raised the hand? Ah, uh, do you have any doubt, Sanla? Okay, let's let's go with this question now. So in this year's IPL, the eight participating teams. This this are the teams. And this were divided into two groups of four teams, and in each group, each team played every other team exactly once. So each team has four mem four ah uh, like each group has four teams, and they played twice. So that will be four c two six matches in each group. 
now um, not more than two matches were played on a single day and at most two teams from a group so that means if in every group there would be one match only on a single day now in each match the winning team got two points and losing team got zero points so for each group there will be 12 points okay we need to arrange okay now um, no points were lost there was no tie and none of the matches were abandoned and the sole winners played each other on sunday that means after the end of this group matches there was a clear cut winner in each group okay there was no tie involved right now uh, not more than one team in the entire tournament had zero points and the team didn't belong to group A. Okay, so one team had zero points. Okay, and that team belonged to group B. Now this team played their first game on same day. And okay, so this is given that KXIP defeated RCB but could not beat DT. Now uh, it's given that the like KXIP defeated RCB. That means they were part of the same group. Okay. So, KXIP, RCB, and DD, they were part of same group. Okay. And similarly, it's given MI defeated RR but could not beat DC. So, these are part of another group. Okay. Now, all of these three teams ended up with same points. Now, KKR lost their game on Tuesday while RCB won on Friday and CSK and MI didn't play on Wednesday. Okay. Same teams won on Monday and Tuesday. Okay, okay, okay. So, um, I think what we need to do is, uh, let's, let's go ahead. So, we have this, consider this is group A. This is group B. This is one lost see we have six days there will be six matches for each group and the final is on sunday so we have monday to saturday each and one match from each group will be conducted on each day that that's fine so let's just write it down monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday and saturday Are you getting this? Yeah. Yeah. So now let's see what other conditions we have. Mm, see. It's it's all of these have same points and see the number of points possible are either they see every team will play three other teams so number of points possible are six four two or zero like if they win three matches if they win two if they win one or if they don't win any now since the all of them have same points and see kxip defeated rcb but could not beat dd so it cannot have this kxip they cannot have six six points they got defeated by one team and they also could not have zero points okay so only possibility is they have four or two now see all of them have same points so consider all of these three having four points each now every group may there has to be 12 points okay so if the all of them have each four points then we are done with 12 points and the other four team that will have zero points okay and then if if that team has zero points then there is no clear cut winner and we need like out of every group we need a clear winner so that means uh, four points for each of them is not possible we need to go with the two points okay so all of them have two and then the four team that has six points that means the four team in this group it has won all the matches are, are you getting this point 
Yeah. Okay. So for the four teams, like we have, we have already categorized the six teams. Now, which which two teams are left? CSK and um, DC is done, DD is done, KK and KKR. Okay. Now, what you can see is uh, KKR lost their game on Tuesday. So KKR cannot belong to this group already. Okay. Since the team in this group that has to win all the three matches. That means KKR belong to this team. And this CSK comes here. And now see, in, in this group, there is no, no team with zero points. So that means this team has to be group A. Since the team with zero point belong to group B. We already discussed this, right? So let's come back here. We have group A that belongs to um, KXIP, RCB, DD, and CSK. And these all have two, 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 and six points. Now group B is comprised of MI, RR, DC, and KKR. MI, RR, DC, and KKR. Okay. Now it's mentioned that same teams won on Monday and Tuesday. Okay. So see, in group A, only one team won more than one, more like more than two matches. Okay. So if same team won on Monday and Tuesday, it has to win at least two matches, which is only CSK. So this has to be CSK. Okay, this is fine with you guys. Yeah. Okay, now let's see what else can we establish. See, it's given that um, KX, see, DC and KXIP played their first game on the same day, but only after other teams in their respective groups had played. So for group A, we have KXIP. So that means KXIP, KXIP will play after this two. That means the last ones, this has to be RCB and DD. Okay. And then KXIP will come here on Wednesday. Okay. Now it's also given that um, DD played its first match not before RCB. That means RCB played its first match before. So that means this has to be RCB and this has to be DD. Okay. You're able to follow through this. Yeah. Okay. So let's see what next points we can. Also, also, we are clear that in, from this group A, CSK will make it to the final. So, these two options are already cancelled for this question. Okay. And, yeah, in this question, though, it's pretty straightforward that DD is part of group A only. So, DD will not make it to the finals. So, this is also cancelled. So, you have this one only. Right? See, even, see when, when you are solving this kind of questions, go ahead with the questions also. Like, uh, for example, if you have five minutes left and if, if I have solved only this much part of the question, I'm able to solve this question. You're getting it. You need to follow this in the exam also. Okay, go through the questions also. See, I have not solved entirely. I just have solved for five minutes and still I'm able to go through this question. Okay. So let's let's see for example next question is which team played their match against tc on wednesday okay so we are not done with it yet uh, let's read to another question total number of points scored by rr and kkr and the statements i think we'll, we'll need to solve for another uh this questions what are the total points scored by two lowest rank groups okay Okay, so let's solve it down now. Uh, now, next point, what we have is uh, same teams. All teams in group play play at least two matches on consecutive days, and 
exactly two teams played their last match on Thursday, but only one qualified, and no teams that played on Friday also played on Sunday. So that means, uh, see, it's given that uh, CSK and MI didn't play on Wednesday. Now, uh, Sunday there will be final. So Friday ko CSK can't play since it will play in final. Wednesday ko CSK is not playing. And what another option we have is exactly two teams played their last match on Thursday, but only one qualified for the final. So if CSK plays plays its match on Thursday, it will be the last match for CSK, and it it is qualifying for the final. So this makes sense having CSK's match on Thursday and it qualifies for the final. Okay. So Sunday we have one match for the CSK. Now uh, this this will be definitely KXIP only. Okay. So what else do we have? Uh, see it's given that um, KXI, KKR lost their game on Tuesday while RCB won on Friday. See, KKR, KKR is in Group B. They won on Tuesday and they lost on Tuesday. Sorry. KKR or lost their game on Tuesday and RCB won on Friday. Okay. Okay, so one more thing you are seeing that uh, in group A, all the teams have to play at least two matches on consecutive days. So RCB had played here, RCB has played here. Now, if RCB plays here, it is not going to be consecutive. RCB has to play here. Okay. And RCB is just winning one match that it has won. So here it is losing. We are getting this point. What this point? Yeah. Okay, so what other information can we use now? Um, see, um, CSK and MI did play on Wednesday. MI defeated RR but could not be DC. Mm, what other points can you use? See, we, we have used this point. We DC will play here. We don't know if it will be winning or losing. So, okay. This point we have used. MI defeated RR but could not beat DC. Okay. Uh, this point we have used. CSK and MI didn't play on Wednesday. Your MI didn't play. Okay. So we have this point also used. DD played its match before RCB. And all teams in group A play at least two matches on consecutive days. So, okay. CSK has played two matches on consecutive days. RCB has. Now, uh, we need to use this for DD or DD and KXIP. Okay. So if KXIP, Achha, we, we, we can use this point. See, KXIP defeated RCB but could not beat DD. Now, uh, RCB was defeated by KXIP. Okay. We can use this here. Now, R KXIP, if it plays here, okay, KXIP can play either way. Uh, but, it's given that it defeated RCB but could not beat DD. That means KXIP has lost against DD. So that means this will be here only. Now this has to be DD. Okay. So we are done with the group A. Is this clear? Yeah. Okay. Now let's move to group B. See, MI, for MI, it's given that. MI, it's given that it defeated RR but could not be TC. So it defeated RR but could That means MI won at least one game. Okay. So for uh, let's see the number of points for these groups. 
so mr uh, like for mumbai indians it cannot be 6 points and it cannot be 0 points it can be either 4 or it can be either 2 okay now for dc also it cannot be 6 points and neither for rr also one of these teams have 0 points right so what we'll do is um see one of these teams will have to have six points okay not more than one team ended with zero points and uh, am i mm. see what we can use now is since mi has lost one match so mi can have either four or two points rr can have also have like um, rr ka we, we are not sure four or two or zero and for dc it can or it can be either six or four or two and kkr ka we are not given any information uh, but we we know that kkr lost lost one of the matches lost their game on tuesday so kkr cannot be uh, 6 it can be 4 or 2 or 0 okay so um, we need to divide 12 points among these teams so mi has already um, now see if we get here as 4 uh, points then mi has won 2 and uh, dc will also be winning so we need to have a single winner that means only team with six possible points is dc that means dc has won all of them okay so that means mi has lost um, i think mi defeated rr but could not beat dc okay so mi can have four points then and uh, we are already done with six and four 10 points so this can be either of them can get two or zero okay we are not sure mi has 4 dc has 6 and either of them has 2 or 0 okay yes okay so now uh, same teams won on monday and tuesday so it can be either mi or dc but it's given that dc uh played it first first game only with kxip so dc is winning all the matches so dc will be here and then this has to be mi mi okay so mi has won against kkr and rr this is okay okay um see we, let's go with the questions also which team can played their match against dc on wednesday Um, see let's see uh, what all questions we can do with the information now okay now we are not sure of this question because we don't know it's it's just that mi didn't play but it can be either rr or kkr now this is what is the total number of points scored by rr and kkr together see either of them get zero or two points so that will be zero plus two so this is two this we can solve now next question um i think see am i won against rr but lost to kkr this is false it won against both kxip lost against csk but won against td kxip kxip did not win against td this is also false okay now rr played but rcb didn't play on wednesday wednesday uh we are not sure this can be true okay this can be true so we have only three only as the option this can be true we are not sure anyways if it will be true or not now total points scored by the two lowest ranked teams in both the groups so in group a it's two points and in group b it's zero points so it's two plus zero that is uh two okay 
I'm here. How many matches did Aran and KKR together win? So together they have two points. That means they won one match. Okay. So see, we are able to solve most of the questions, leaving this one with with the with the information from what we have solved till now. Okay. So just you'll you'll need to read this through again and figure out what you can fill in this remaining boxes also. And it's okay if you are not able to fill and leave that one question. Bouncer. Okay, you were not able to follow through or what? This was okay. Uh, were others able to follow? Others were able to follow or not? No, that only three wala question. Which three wala question? Uh, I this question. So, see, this is easy. You just need to see. Am I won against RR but lost to KKR? So, this is false. See, let's go to the one we solved. Yeah. So, am I won against both of them? Okay. So, this has to be definitely false. This cannot be true. Okay. Now, KXIP lost against CSK but won against TD. Now, KXIP lost. They definitely lost against CSK but they also lost against TD. So, this is also false. Okay. Now, RR played but RCB did, didn't play on Wednesday. So, RCB didn't play on Wednesday. That is true. And RR can play on Wednesday. Okay. This can be true. Okay. We are not yet sure. So this this is the only option you have. Sanlap, so you are able to follow now the question twenty eight. See, it's okay if you leave this one question that we um if since we have not completed the table, we are not yet sure of this question and it's okay if you leave that you are able to solve the rest of the questions and that will take you like greater than 99.9 percentile and see if you are someone targeting 95 to 97 percentile you could have left this entire set and still you could have easily got past 99 percentile okay guys is this going well for you are you able to follow it? Yes. So you understood what sets you should have picked first and you should have the pick this set definitely last. See now now try to imagine what, what would have happened if you have picked this set as the first one. Now you would have wasted your entire time on this set and the easier ones which were after this, you would have lost and that. Getting it? So this is this shows the importance of set selection. Okay which you need to follow.